Welcome to Westbury United Methodist Church. I'm glad you're able to join us again in worship this day. I wanted to share with you that one of the things I love about our church is that we have gained a reputation. A reputation that we will support and love the schools um, in our neighborhood. Uh, Coulter is a way that we've reached out, uh, Westbury High School, Meyerland Middle, and most recently, Tinsley Elementary. Uh, their wraparound specialist showed up with a few of their students at our Sanctuaries of Learning last fall. And since then, she reached out before Christmas to do a toy drive here that y'all responded in an amazing way. And just recently, she reached out again and asked if we could help get some snacks to show appreciation for all the teachers have done at their school. Um, and I hope that we can show up for this snack drive and we will continue to show up, not just for our schools, for students and for teachers and staff, but also for our neighborhood. Um, and we do this because we are grounded in the love of God. And we experience this love of God through worship. We experience this love of God through fellowship, through being with one another. Uh, so I'm glad you are connecting with us again and invite you to visit our website, go to the updates page, um, find a way to meet people, even if it's not in person. Uh, we are reading through the Bible and we'll be having our first sort of Zoom check-in this Wednesday night. Uh, you can find information on our website and at this address right here. Um, and invite you to register your attendance. Fill out that attendance pad just as if you were in the pews. And of course, pray for each other. Visit our prayer page, look at the names on there, and just say them. Spend some time and read through the names and ask God to be present and to share grace and comfort and presence and peace with beloved church members and the extension of our church family. Um, I give thanks every day to be a part of this church family. And I'm so glad that we can worship together. We see life, hope, and joy. We bring heart, soul, mind, and body. We share blessings and fears. We bring faith and doubt. With all that we are and all that we have, let us worship God.
join me in affirming our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we've come to the time in our worship service where we pass the peace of Christ. And in doing so, we invite you to pause the video and take your phone and, and think of someone in the church that you maybe haven't spoken to in a while. Send a text message sharing your love and remembering the gift of sacred community. The peace of Christ be with you. I shall not want In green pastures He makes me lie down He restores my soul And leads me on For His name For His great name And surely could Surely mercy, right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house forever, and bless your holy Prepare a table right before me In the presence of my enemies Though the arrow flies And the terror of night is at my door I trust you the 
comes from the book of John and John. It's, it's a story about a man who was born blind and Jesus heals him which this was is the New Testament too. It, it's in the New Testament and we know that because Jesus is in the story right yeah so this man who was born blind was healed by Jesus and everyone was so amazed and they didn't know how this miracle happened because that's not something that happens every day right if you're born blind you don't just magically get your sight one day Right? So everyone wanted to know, who is this guy that healed healed him? Jesus. Who's Jesus, right? And so, the but, son of the Lord. Yeah, so when people were talking about Jesus, at first, you know, his disciples were calling him rabbi, which we know means teacher. So oh, okay. Jesus is a teacher. And then they were like, well, yeah, but I have teachers. And do your teachers at school heal blind people? No. No. Well, maybe this man is a man of God. Well, maybe he's the son of God. Maybe he's the Messiah. So Messiah? The, the Messiah, which is the son of God. The, which is a weird name. It's a weird name. It means someone who has come from God to help heal and save people. Um, and that describes Jesus, right? Like mythical beings? Like that mythical beings? Well, no, not like myth mythical beings. So maybe uh, in a myth, a story myth, there might be someone who comes as a hero to save people. Hercules. Yeah, like, so Hercules is a hero in the story that, that you learned about him, right? But Jesus, right, comes from God, actual God, and is the actual son of God, right? So as we learn the story and we learn more about who Jesus is and the amazing relationship he has with God, we can also learn about the relationship that we can have with God. Because not just special people get to talk to God, right? Everyone can talk to God, no matter who you are. Wait, uh, even, if you're, even if you're a low-down, dirty criminal? Even if you're a low-down, dirty criminal, you can still talk to God and learn from God I mean, and have God's are, love. I mean, bullies are okay with talking to God, but... They don't deserve it as much, and low-down dirty criminals do not deserve that at all. But, and that might be what we think, right? But so what does God say? God says everybody deserves love. Like Martin Luther King said, e equality! No, it's not true. Everyone should be together. Everyone should be together, equality. right? Everyone should be equal. Yeah, and that's a great thing that Martin Luther King told us. And he's a preacher. He knows all about how God loves everyone and God's grace mm -hmm. touches every single person. And that's one of the things that people wanted to figure out in the story, too. What did the blind guy do to become blind? Was he a low-down, dirty criminal? And you know what Jesus said to that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. He is a beloved child of God. He didn't do anything wrong. So he was just... And like, God loves everyone the same. So God just decided to have him blind for some reason? Well, sometimes people are just born a certain way, and it's not that God made a decision to do that. It just is how things happen in our bodies. They all work in different ways, right? Yeah. So God's love is for everybody, and we can all learn about God and all know God's grace and love. Who's the blind guy's name? That's a good question. I'm going to call him Mike. Mike. Mike's an awesome name. I'll call him Jonathan. Jonathan? Okay. Jonathan. Are you all ready to pray? Yes. All right. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you so much for giving us your love. Thank you so much for giving us your love. And helping us know. And helping us know. That we're all your beloved children. That we're all your beloved children. Even if we're a low down 
Dirty Criminal. Do I pour a load on Dirty Criminal? In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye! A reading from John 9, 1 through 17, 24 through 27, 35 through 39. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, though, that he was blind, that I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Is anyone else dreaming at night about people with masks on in the world? <laughs> this world right now seems so dystopian. <laughs> and has entered my dreams and I don't like it. I got a COVID test this past weekend because I had found myself at a gathering of people and I didn't expect the gathering to be as large as it was with some people with masks not on. And that's not my usual practice. So I decided to isolate and get a COVID test just to make sure that I wasn't passing anything on that I wasn't aware of germ-wise. The test came back negative. Great, but I'm I'm noticing lately, just so intensely aware of my proximity to other people's noses and mouths. So today's passage about Jesus' saliva and him sharing that spit with another guy just hits a bit differently these days. The gospel according to John drops us into an encounter with Jesus when he's out on a walk with his disciples and he sees a blind man, and this is an encounter that is personal, it is physical, and it is empowering. So first of all, in the story, the disciples, as always, are rather nosy. 
they asked teacher, who is the sinner here? Is it the parents? Is it the young guy? Why did this happen to him? Who's to blame here? See, in the ancient world and today, there's a strong correlation in folks' minds between disability or illness and sin. You see it in the book of Exodus. You see it in the prosperity gospel today. People want to understand why do bad things happen to good people. And I want to be clear here that in chapter 9 of John, Jesus is totally ditching that script. This guy's parents aren't to blame, Jesus says. This guy isn't to blame, says Jesus. It happened. He was born this way. And also God intends to work through him and his body. So right out the gate, please join me in kicking that trashy theology to the curb, okay? This blind man is intimately familiar with the margins. He lives on the margins of society because that's where people with power have placed him. We as human beings, we are prone to this practice. We marginalize humans based on gender, based on sexuality, based on language, based on culture, age, and ability. And in the process of pushing out and pushing down, we build layers upon layers of shame. Jesus sees the man and has compassion for the man on the margins, living with shame. And then he gets all up in this guy's personal space. He touches the guy's face. But really, first of all, he spits in his hand, bends over to dig in the dirt, and makes some homespun mud. And then with the spitty mud in his hands, he sticks his holy muddy fingers in the blind eyes, blind guy's eyes. We don't know exactly what happened. We, we know what the text tells us, which is that Jesus says, next, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And the word play here is pretty fun because the pool's name, Siloam, means sent. And what we see is that the man is sent to the pool. He goes and washes. After this very direct and vulnerable encounter with Jesus, he vulnerably and personally responds. He washes off at the pool and he discovers that for the first time he can see brilliant shimmering water as the sun reflects off it. Swooping birds settle in at the far corner of that pool. Brilliant melanin reflected back at him as he sees his brown face for the first time. This miraculous sign that Jesus gives the man is really an invitation to abundant life with God. Getting his attention in a very dramatic way and inviting him into relationship with God. Setting aside talking about God to picking up the practice of talking with God. The blind man got messy with Jesus in order to gain clarity in his life. And this clarity around who God is and who the man was and the man's own story was just the beginning of his yes to abundant life with God. Friends, we've got to get messy with Jesus in order to gain clarity in our lives. We've got to be willing to name our shame and be naked before God. And in the naming of our shame and the nakedness before God, Jesus will give us clarity. All that spit and dust, the mixing and the mingling of the saliva of God with the substance of our being, and then going and washing it off, saying yes to standing up and being led over to a pool of water to release that mixing and mingling, to bathe in this time of encounter with God. When we choose to be empowered to participate in our own healing, we find clarity. And Christ's clarity swings wide open the door to abundant life with God. And get ready, because there will be voices that try to squelch your access to abundant life with God. 
There will be voices that try to steal your joy of your own experience of who you are now. The Pharisees are obsessed. Did you hear it in the text? They are absolutely obsessed with labeling the once blind, now seeing man's experience. They want to define it. They want to control what they don't understand. They are oppressive in their doggedly interrogation while having no interest in actually listening to the man and to his story. They want to hold power, and they want to exert that power over the marginalized man. I mean, we can, we can speculate. Is it their own jealousy, their own fear, their own pain, their own guilt, shame? Whatever it is, it's their stuff projected out onto the man who said yes to getting messy with Jesus for the sake of his own clarity and abundant life. The Pharisees don't want liberation. They're not interested in doing the work of getting divine spit and holy dirt in their eyes and being sent down to Siloam and washing themselves clean. Instead, they'd rather avoid that inner work, that work of getting close and messy with God, because getting close and messy with God is not easy. It's not easy to let down your guard with God and let God come close and let God love you. It's not easy being honest about the truth of your life. But it's so worth it. It's the only way to truly live. So how, how do we respond to the powers that interrogate? Well, what we see in John is we tell the truth. As the Pharisees plummeted the man with questions, he stuck to what he knew. He spoke out loud. He spoke of his encounter with Jesus and what happened to him and what he did. I once was blind, but now I see. He named the change that he knew in his bones. I once was blind, but now I see. He clung to his story. God interrupting his life and touching him and empowering him and changing him. Friends, when's the last time God interrupted your life? When's the last time that Jesus was walking around and, and saw you in the midst of your stuff, in the midst of your situation, and Jesus had compassion on you? Jesus saw you and knew you and interrupted you by sticking his fingers in your eyes, spat on his hand, dug in the dirt, and touched you. When's the last time you let Jesus do that? Last time you said yes to going down to the pool, not knowing the outcome yet, but just saying yes. When's the last time you said yes to getting messy and clear with God? I'm here to tell you the truth, that every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment for you to choose to say yes to getting messy with Jesus and getting clear with yourself and with God. Because when you choose to get messy with Jesus and get clear with yourself and with God, you can get clear with others. You can be honest with others. Westbury, we're taking steps to make room for Jesus' spitty mud so we can get honest with each other. You know that we're a covenant bound together in Christian love here in this community. We're people who have a vision to be a church for all people with more than enough love to go around. And we are rooted in five values. Multicultural inclusivity, community, grace, accountability, and transformation. We are a unique people. The most segregated hour of the week continues to be the worship service hour for folks, and here, it's different. As a multicultural congregation with multiracial people, we're different. We're leaning into Jesus' prayer that the people of God would be one. But y'all, we're not perfect. We've got work to do in growing into that vision that we've named 
for ourselves and we need to know our story and we need to get messy. We need to get messy with God and with each other so we might gain clarity and continue to live into the abundant life that God dreams for us as a church. There's a small group of leaders collaborating with an organization called Project Curate. And Project Curate, its, its mission is to enact emancipatory and liberating practices of public and community engagement that move people into zones where they can dismantle barriers that tend to exist along the lines of class, race, sex, gender, and or political orientation. So the group at Westbury comprising this team is it's me and John Henry Coker and Aaron Marshall and Steve Ewing, who I want to give a big thank you to publicly for their time and their commitment to this ministry. This ministry um, that this group is committed to, uh, the people are passionate about developing strategies and approaches to what we do as a congregation that effectively responds to recurring issues of inequality and injustice brought about racialism and its damaging effects. So we are interested in going deeper within our church, working for racial equity, both inside our congregation, but also beyond in the world. We got to start at home base first though, okay? So we're trying to look back at Westbury's story and interpreting who we are today to help us look forward to God's dream for us. And we want to hear from you so that we can empower more people to play an active role in our church's future. So the team is working to learn more about power and how power shows up in general with human beings together, and then how to analyze that power and do some work in listening and reflecting upon the truth of power at work in Westbury's story and in our congregation. The truth moves us toward liberation. It moves us toward the deep justice that God calls us to, and the truth will set us free. So this truth-telling process, this is not a short-term process. It's the work of communal discernment, and there will be steps determined this next month and in the coming months, and really out the next couple years, as small groups based on affinity will be formed to create safe and brave spaces to name the truth and get into the picture of what your dreams are for this community, what your experience of power is here in our church. We want our church to be a place, a community where everyone's voice matters, everyone's story is told, and everyone is truly welcomed. And we know there are things that we can do and that we need to do to be better. There are things we need to get messy about in order to gain clarity. So if you'd like to know more about this transformative justice work that I and the team are working on, we invite you to reach out to one of us. We're ready and waiting to hear from you and put you to work. Friends, we're, we're people of truth. And the truth is about a man from Galilee who lived a life that proclaimed, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Let anyone who is without sin cast the first stone. I and the light of the world. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. May Jesus interrupt you, you this week. May you lean in to the messiness and closeness of the breath of God, that you might gain clarity and abundance of life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Would you please join your heart with mine in prayer? Source of light, God of great mercy and love, we come to you this day seeking restoration of our sight. In a world filled with so much pain, too often we would rather shut our eyes and be blind than see things as they really are. Grant us the courage to face the reality of our world. Open our eyes to see your presence among us, moving in powerful ways at all times and in all places. Help us see others as you see them. 
and forgive us when we do not trust you enough to open our eyes to the possibilities before us. Clear away our blindness, O oh God, and lead us in the footsteps of the light of the world, who reveals your glory in his life, his teachings, and his love. We pray this in his holy name and continue to pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, as you go from this time, may you remember this week that Jesus is looking for you. And may you pay attention for moments of Jesus interrupting you, maybe sticking his fingers in your eyes, or maybe more subtle than that. But may you be open to getting messy with God so that you can find clarity in your life and with others for the sake of abundant life. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.